Building is a huge part of Fallout 76 and there's plenty of hidden tricks which can help you access more budget and build in unexpected ways. I'm about to share my top 15 tricks with you. Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. In this one, I'm going to cover several building tips and tricks to help you create more and better camps in 2021 and forward. Most of the tips also apply to shelters, by the way. Now, I will cover the easiest ones first and then I will gradually cover the more complex tricks which can unlock new items, sort of, and entirely new ways to build. The entire purpose of this video is to help you recover some budget and enable new building strategies which work as tools to expand your creativity. Moreover, keep in mind that most examples in this video are just that, examples, and there's a lot more you can do with the given techniques. With that being said, let's get into it! Alright, let me start with a very simple trick, which is about moving all your workbenches into a shelter. You might find this ridiculous at first, but workbenches do take a significant part of your camp budget as shown. I added all 8 workbenches and then scrapped them. If you take a closer look at the camp budget bar, you can see that the 8 benches occupy a decent amount of the budget. I know going through a loading screen every time you want to access a workbench is not ideal, but at least you have a bit more space to build more of all those things you are not allowed to build inside a shelter. Plus, if you are running 76 on a SSD disk, the loadings are rather quickly. I recommend you to move the workbenches close to the shelter's entrance, so the access is as quick as possible, just like I did here. Nevertheless, this change might not suit everyone's playstyle, I totally understand. Personally, I don't mind it, it's not like I'm using each workbench a lot anyway. Alternatively, you can leave the benches you use the most at the surface, such as a cooking station and a tinker's bench, and move everything else inside the shelter. If you are looking forward to free some camp budget, this is definitely something you should try, trust me. The next trick is something everyone should be doing, but sadly, not a lot of players seem to follow. Mastering the tiny building technique can free a lot of budget from your camp. How so? Well, think with me. Why would you build a huge camp with dozens of foundations, walls, floors and roofs, and then leave most areas empty because your budget is now full? Hmm? It's a waste of resources to go big and it doesn't look that great, unless you like to see large empty rooms. If not, then you can recover some budget by keeping your camp low profile, stick with a small to medium camp and make every little bit count. Maximize the space, build crowded rooms and at the end of the day, you are able to save on basic building items, which obviously gives you extra space to build whatever else you want. So there you go, this is a great example of how big doesn't always mean smart. If you like to produce your own veggies, then this trick is just for you. A small garden is sometimes inconvenient, especially if you often craft vegan foods, but there is a way to keep your garden small while getting a high harvest. All you have to do is to have a turbo fert in your garden, and if you don't have one yet, don't worry, you can buy the plant from Sam at the foundation in exchange for gold bullion. Then the rest is very simple. Make your garden compact, as in build all the veggies close to each other in low quantities. I have four of each basically, but you can have even less. Then whenever you need more at once, just use a turbo fart and voila, you double your harvest with just one click. It's so easy and convenient. But there's more. This trick allows you to save on camp budget too, since you no longer need to have a huge garden. A small and compact one is all you need with the Turbo Fert strategy. 
Another smart way to free some camp budget is to upgrade your power installation to wall conduits. I see a lot of people building normal conduits through windows and doors or going all the way around walls, when in reality you can save on wires and conduits by simply making direct connections with wall through conduits. It's very simple to install, just find a suitable spot for the wall conduit, place it and then add a conduit junction at the end, ready to be attached directly to a power source. It can be your generator or any other conduit with power running through it. Wall conduits allow you to create a more effective system which can better distribute energy across your camp. And that's exactly what you want because it means you need less items and at the end of the day that equals more free budget to use on other items. Now, isn't that beautiful? That's enough camp budget tricks for now. This new point is about customizing pre-made items such as machines and ally items. Most people don't seem to be aware that they can be customized. In other words, you can expand or complement them to look different and unique. For example, I have added several items to my Solomon's Medic Bay. I added a poster, a light, a flower, even a chair and a carpet. It looks quite different from the original station, don't you think so? And that's exactly what I wanted. Another item you can personalize is the scavenging bot station. You can even add more terminals or attach some signs and decor to it. In fact, you can give a personal touch to basically any machinery you own, including the ammo converter machine and the ammo producer machine. You can add all sorts of wall decor to them, if that's what you want to do, of course. And there you go, the option is there if you want to make the machines a little bit more personalized. If not, oh well, but at least you should be aware the option exists. Cycling lights are underused, even though they are a powerful tool to give life to your creations. I hardly see them around, probably because most players are unaware of their potential. In fact, I've only learned about their ability to create colored settings a few months ago. <laughs> That's right. The cycling light is a free item part of the assorted light plan, which can be easily bought from some vendors or looted from workshop event rewards. Now, the cycling light needs a direct wire to work, which doesn't look very pretty, but they can be turned into basically any color you wish. Actually, you can pair several of them to create a certain mood or better fit an existing concept. You can even create a color gradient by using several cycling lights in a line with similar colors. In this example, I went for yellow and green, then later for blue and purple, which are sequence colors in the universal color palette. Also, I have two cycling lights, one orange and one yellow at my rustic bar, which kind of sets the western rustic mood I aimed for. The possibilities are endless here, so you should definitely be using cycling lights whenever you see fit. Alright, another tip to create spectacular and unique things is to think out of the box. Fallout 76 has hundreds of items and a decent amount of building freedom when it comes to rules. So sometimes all you have to do is to think of a new concept and try to make it real. Build around it until you get something different, something amazing with that wow effect, if you know what I mean. A great example here is the popular fake aquarium. I've seen it around in some camps and it does look unique in the sense that you are not expecting to see such thing. It also looks pretty. Now, you can build your own aquarium at your camp, but it's rather difficult to place the fishes. The easiest way is to build it inside the shelter since you can make any necessary items float, such as the fishes, especially them. Needless to say, there are no rules to make your aquarium. You can add bushes, rocks, plants, decor, and whatever else you see fit, really. Just make sure to cover your creation with glass walls to achieve that enclosed glass box effect and you are pretty much good to go. This next tip is for shelters only and it's about taking advantage of the floating item placement rule. In most cases, floating items are not very convenient to have. This rule can be annoying, especially when you are trying to properly place items with the respective physics. 
but it's not all bad. Floating building enables a new way to build. For example, you no longer need wall frames to realistically place a door. You can just build walls and then place any door you want close to one of the walls and it will look like it's properly attached to it, just like this quick setting I did here. You can also build new counters using different objects like putting a puzzle together or even cover shelter walls with counters to give them a new and unique look. You can also attach all sorts of items to the walls to make them look like decor. You can also attach all sorts of items to the walls to make them look like they are wall decor. There is really a lot you can do using this shelter wally building rule, so let your creativity run wild. Talking about placing items into walls to make them look like decor, there is a clever trick for camps, which require a power armor frame. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, Bethesda lets you build on top of power armors at your camp. Don't ask me why, it's a mystery. Now, you can use this trick to impress your friends or guests into thinking you have a power armor display for a short duration. I mean, the frame will always return to your inventory, so don't worry there. But while it doesn't return, you can build on top of it to make it look like it's part of your camp. Keep in mind that the built items will remain in the air, floating once your frame recalls. The alternative is to use the frame as a building tool, place the frame close to a wall and start adding floor decor items to the top. They will get pinned to the wall once you collect your frame, which makes it look like you have brand new wall decor, when in reality it's not really decor for the walls, but it just works. On the other hand, this trick doesn't seem to work for most items. I tried with small tables, chairs, even stash boxes, but the system does not allow me to place them. So far, only floor decor items worked, so there's that. Now, did you know that you can use railings as wall shelves? That's right. Well, they don't work everywhere at camps. In shelters, due to the floating rule, they do work anywhere, but for camps, you need to place them near other items or close to the floor. I have a med bay, for example, and I added one near the wall bed and it works perfectly. I even added a meal on a tray with a drink and a mochi, which is the closest we have to food in 76 right now, regarding player items but you can obviously add anything else you want as long as it fits on top of the railing parts, such as toys and small decor items like succulent plants. In shelters, you can add slightly larger items such as the dead cloth figure and others, which might bounce half off, but still they stay there put on the railing, or shall I say shelf, it works both ways, so why not? Okay, now let me tell you how to properly decorate the largest beige metal shelf we have in game right now. First, using the camp rules. Now, the very bottom and top are no problem, you can easily add a huge variety of items there. However, when it comes to the middle tiers, things become problematic. That's because there are two small rules in here. First, you can only add quite small items, and secondly, they can only be placed on the outer half past the beige line, on the exterior brown metal part, which leaves a really small place for item placement. Mm -hmm. But this only applies to the second tier from the top. The third tier is quite inaccessible for camps. I tried everything and I was never able to place anything there. Not even the Moshi, the smallest decor item I own. The only way to fill it up is using a trick I will show you on the next point. Moving on, if you try to fill this shelf inside a shelter, there are basically no rules. You can easily add all sorts of decor as long as they fit in the tiers. Huge items might not fit or they might only be placeable on the edges of each tier. You can even add wall decor items here, so you have plenty of freedom and choices to go for. Adding decor to some shelves is a huge challenge, especially when it comes to lower tiers but there's a way around it. To do this trick, you need to build a pressure plate, then you need to power it up, 
or the trick won't work. So this is very important. You need to give it power. Now build any shelf you want and let's get started. Decor the top part with whatever items you want, but make sure they are small enough to fit the lower tiers as well, because we are going to move them down. Place the shelf on the pressure plate when you are done and now start placing it there over and over. You will notice that the shelf remains at the same height but the decor items will get dragged down slightly with every placement you do on the pressure plate. That's because the plate moves with every placement you do, but for some reason the shelf does not move with the plate, only the items on top of it do. As a result, the items will keep going down to fill the lower shelf tiers, and that's exactly what we want. Make sure to stop once the item's base touch the respective shelf tier, or it will clip inside the shelf parts, and we don't want that. Now, if you wish to fill every tier, you need to plan ahead. For example, on this wooden shelf with three tiers, you need to stop the trick once you fill the middle tier, place more decor on the top and then drag again to ensure the third tier is also going to get filled. Lastly, decor the first tier on the top for a complete shelf. This trick sounds a bit complex at first, but once you try it, you easily get the hang of it. This also works for shelters, despite the floating rule, you are still not able to decor all shelf tiers there, so you can use this trick for both camp and shelters when it comes to shelf decoration. The next trick is a very old one. I think it exists ever since the game got released, to be honest with you. It allows you to stack and clip items by tricking the game rules. It's actually what griefer camps use to stack traps on top of each other, but in this case, I'm teaching you how to create new stuff. Let's say you want to build a safe inside the wall, no problemo. Place your safe in the middle of the foundation or a floor, then build a flamethrower aiming at the safe, power it up and let the thrower do its job. Let it get destroyed. Now it's time to place a wall where the safe was. Don't repair it just yet. Place the wall first and then you can repair the safe. And that's it, it's very, very simple. You get a safe inside a wall. This trick works with anything you want, so it's totally possible to do it with realistic stuff, like a wardrobe, a fridge, a vending machine, anything that makes sense to you, really. Just don't forget to build a wall behind the items to hide their bags, or it will look weird, just saying. Moreover, this trick also allows you to do different item placement and even merge items in unexpected ways, just to let you know. All right, do you remember the pressure plate trick I explained for fully decorating shelves? Well, the same trick can be used for a different purpose, to merge items. Mm -hmm. That's right, you can merge two items into one by pushing the top one inside the other. I know it sounds strange and obviously it doesn't work with every item out there, but if you choose carefully, there are some interesting combinations you can do, such as placing a terminal desk on top of a normal desk and then merging them together. After several placements on the pressure plate, you will end up with the terminal itself on top of your new table, while the older table is kinda hidden under the new one. And yes, when powered up, the terminal will work as usual. Another possible creation I came up with is merging a wooden table with a sink. This could be useful for your kitchen or barbecue place or even your bedroom if you have a big one. Just make sure to keep an eye on the sink's interior to do not let it clip through the wooden surface. The depth is higher than the wooden frame outside, so it's very easy to screw this one up if you are not taking a closer look at the inside of the sink. But overall, I think it looks great. There's really a lot you can do here, so keep experimenting, because that's the key to find things that really work together. The last trick I have for you is the most complex one in the entire video. It's about invert placement, which is a great way to unlock new items. Well, not necessarily new, but it's something most players never see, the back of items create the illusion of new. 
I will use two examples here. The first one is the back of the metal mirror we have, which is tall, flat and gold, ideal to place other metal decor items on it, such as the Kirby heads. Anyway, for this trick, you need huge items such as shelves or tables. The end table works like a charm, so go ahead and place two with your backs to you, one on top of each other in a straight line. If they are not straight, you might not be able to place the item you want to invert. The second step is to obviously place your item in the center of the tables, in this case it's the mirror. Now remove the top table and the bottom one should carry the mirror with it when moved. Now you want to place both items on top of your camp spawn item, for whatever reason moving items there has the reverse effect of the pressure plate. No joke, instead of moving items down, it moves them up, with the exception of the item directly touching it. As I said, it's the inverse logic of the pressure plate trick. So go ahead and place the table as many times as needed, until your item is as high as you want. Then all you have to do is go back and place your table facing you, and voila, the mirror is now placed in revert. You can see the metal back, and it's very unique in its own way. It's also really shiny with light. Another great example of this technique is to use the season scoreboards, which can mimic an LD screen or even a school board, depending on how much light you want to use on them. Anyway, for larger items, you need a few more tables to give enough space for the placement, but the logic is the exact same. Just make sure all your tables are making a straight surface for proper placement. Also, make sure your revert items goes in the middle of the desk, the center one, so it looks fine for the last form, for the last placement. Well, there you go. With scoreboards, the back is gray, so with low light, it looks like a TV screen. With plenty of light, it looks like a shulk board. Quite different, huh? You can even write on it, like your Discord code or social media link. Anyway, in shelters, you can easily place items in reverse, so this trick applies to camps only. Also, just like the previous points, this trick allows you to use the back of every item and create the illusion of building brand new items. Have fun experimenting, by the way! Well, these are my top tips and tricks to build more and better camps in 2021 and forward. I hope this video helped you expand your tools to build in a more personalized and unique way. Now, if you are a dedicated builder, you probably were aware of most of these points, but I hope you were able to learn at least something new. Alright, that's everything I have for you regarding building strategies for the time being. And remember, creativity and patience are the two essential keys to build something amazing. Something with that wow factor. Anyway, I am Marta Branco. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more 76 tips and tricks like this. And to help YouTube know you enjoy the content too. A special thanks to all my dear supporters. And that's it. I will see you all very, very soon in the next video. Until then, take care. Adios. Bye bye.